Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you lord you've been so good you've been so good you've been so I just want to thank you, Lord. You made a way. You made a way. You made a way, and I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. just want to thank God for all that he's done, for all that he is doing, for all that he is continuing to do. I'm going to read again for your hearing uh, the scripture for today, which come from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 9 and 10. I will be reading from the Amplified Classic version, so, so it may read a little different from yours. And the word of the Lord reads as such. Therefore, whether we are at home on earth away from him or away from home and with him, we are constantly ambitious and strive earnestly to be pleasing to him. For we, we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil, considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved, been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplishing. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love. I pray now that you would have your way, have your way in me, speak in and through and to me, for all that I am, everything that I have, any wisdom that I speak comes from you. Endow me now with your spirit, hide me behind Calvary's cross, let them only hear you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So last week, um, when I came before you all, my sermon title was entitled Under New Management. And we we 
we we discussed how when we're under new manage, sometimes the new management likes to reconstruct and 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 that's kind of what God does to us when we give our lives over to him. He reconstructs, he, he, he moves some things around. He may take some things out and put some new things in because as our scripture was, if any man be in Christ, he's an he's a old, uh, a new creation, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we know that, that God uh, is reconstructing us. He's, he's making us over. He's moving some stuff out and bringing some stuff in and maybe pushing some stuff over that way and pushing some stuff over that way. But God is reconstructing us. And so as, as I was talking to the Holy Spirit about what to bring before the people today, he started, he started reminding me of an audition. He said, well, you're, you're under new management. And now that new manager is, 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 is going to give you an audition. I said, an audition? He said, yes, an audition. So I want to talk about an audition today. And an audition basically, um, and, and, and from the Webster's point of view, is an interview for a particular role or job, uh, specifically as a singer, actor, dancer, or, dem or um, a musician, um, consistent of a practical demonstration of the candidate's suitability and Still. But as the Holy Spirit was talking to me about an audition, he wasn't particularly talking about a singer, actor, dancer, or musician, but he was saying, I am giving you an, an audition as a, as a new person in Christ, as a person who has re received salvation. So therefore, that's a particular, there's a particular role that I now need you to play as you have become one of mine and you are no longer uh, under the law of sin and death. You are no longer under the law of condemnation, but now I have placed you under me, under new management, under the law of grace and mercy. And now that you are under the law of me, under the law of grace and mercy, there is a particular role and a particular job that I have for you to do as one who has received Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so now I am going to see what your, your skills are and what your suitability are as far as taking on that role because a lot of times a lot of people over the years I've noticed have said I'm saved but yet they have never changed anything about themselves they continue on in their old ways but as we read the scripture from today it says it, it says it says it says so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body so we're going to have to give an account for what we have done in the body what are we doing with this christianity that we have received what are we doing with the salvation that we have received we know that now that this 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 old man has passed away and and new the new man should have arrived. The new man should be coming. The new man should be bursted out. He, he, he should be taking his place. He should be taking his rightful place in the body of Christ. But sometimes people get saved and want to stay in the old. They don't want to move. They don't want to change. But God said, I am now your new manager and I have an audition for you to go to. So now I need you to show me your suitability. I need you to show me your skills. I need you to fulfill this particular role in this cast that I had I am casting So we learned that we we have a new management we are we are no longer under the old management of, of sin and death we are no longer under the old management of that flesh that was ruling us Now we need to be walking in that new management we are on our way to our addition and so when I was reading about auditions, I learned that there's a couple of types of auditions that you can audition for. There's, an, there's one what they call an open audition, which is held in front of, it's held with everyone who is auditioning. So everybody that's auditioning for this role, they're all in the same room as, and, and, and the production staff, they're all in the same room together. And anyone can walk in and audition at, and audition at any time. So what I said, what I said was, okay, now, now, and then, and 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 in regular, and in, in in the carnal, you have this this uh, open audition. Anybody can walk in and, and, and at any time. And so, and I I begin to ask the Lord, well, you know, speak to me in the spirit realm. What does that mean? He said, well, with an open audition, he said, I I haven't I have this this open policy where anybody can come and anybody can come to me and anybody can receive salvation and receive salvation. Anybody can 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 come to this this open audition. 
It, everybody is welcome. There's not one person who's not welcome to come to this open audition. All are welcome to come. And he said, and, and they'll be in the room. The, the room will be full with, with me and the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, and the host of angels will all be in this room as they come for this open audition. We're all here as you decide that I want to take on this role. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to receive this thing called salvation. Why? Because he is extending this invitation for this audition for you. He said, if you want to be one of my disciples, if you want to be like me, pick up your cross. He said, all you have to do is call on my name. All you have to do is believe that I am. Believe that I am the Christ. Believe that I am the Son of God. Believe that I am who I say I am. And you, you too can be invited to partake in this audition. God has an open audition for anybody to come to, anybody to partake in. He's not, he's, he's not saying this is just for the Jews. He's not saying that this is just for the Greek. He's not saying this is just for the tall. He's not saying this is just for the fat. He's not saying this is just for the skinny. He's not saying this is just for the beautiful. He said, I have an open audition where you can come to me at any time. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. But here I stand, arms wide open, waiting for you to come. Come to my audition. Come to my audition. Come to my audition, God is beckoning. And as I continue to read about auditions, I, I also learned that there was what they had, what they call a closed audition. And a closed audition is one that's held when the production staff and potential cast members are in different rooms and only certain people can audition. It's usually by invitation and only arranged through agents. God is our manager. In other words, he's our agent. So there comes a time when not only does God says, okay, I have this open audition where everybody is invited, but then God gets a little bit more personal with us. And he says, I have this, this closed, this, this, this closed invitation for, for an audition. I, I have this, 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 this invitation where everybody's not going to see, but I, I'm going to line, align, line this up with, 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 with this, this station over here, I'm going to line this up over here with these, this group of people over here. I'm going to line this up over here with, 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 with those who, who, who may be going through right here. And I'm going to give you a closed, a, 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 a closed audition where I'm going to be up close and personal and I'm going to be watching out and, 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 and I'm inviting you and, and I'm going to set you up and, 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 and I'm going to show off your new talents and I'm going to show off the way you love people. And I'm going to show off the way you have grace for people. And I'm going to show off the way you may forgive people because this is a closed invitation. This is one where I'm, I'm watching you closely. It's just me and you and it's, it's me and the father and me and the son and me and the Holy Ghost. And we're watching you and we now we see that you have accepted this invitation for salvation. You have come to the open audition. Now I need to get a little bit more personal and I need one that's a little bit more closed where I can watch you a little bit more closely and I can keep my eye on you a little bit more closely and I can see how you're doing this thing. How What are you doing with this thing called salvation? What, what, what are you doing with that gift that I have now given you? Now that you're no longer under the old man, but now that you are the new creature, what are you doing as a new creature? Have you changed the way you talk? Have you changed the way you walk? Have you changed the way you think things? Have you been changed the way you do things? Are you still doing things the same or have you changed? Now I have you in a closed audition up close and personal where I can keep my eye on you a little bit better. So he invites us to this open audition where anybody can come. Anybody can come and receive the gift of salvation. And then he makes it a little more personal and he, 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 he makes it a closed audition. So he, he's, he's keeping his eye on you. He's watching. He, he's watching. He's watching that, that, that gift that he put in you. He, he's sitting there. He's stirring the pot. And he's watching. He's seeing how you do with it. He's seeing how you're out there loving. He's seeing how you're out there forgiving. He's seeing how you're treating people. He's seeing how you talk and how you walk. And are things changing? Is that old man passing away? Is it slowly going away? Or for some people, it might take off overnight. It might just go away altogether. But God is sitting there and he's watching. He's got you in this closed audition. And he's watching you all eyes on you. Just 
like David when David was out in the field keeping his father's sheep and David used to dance before the Lord. David didn't have nobody watching him, but he had an audience of one and that was God himself. And that's the same way God has us in this audition right now with this closed audition. He said, I am the one that's watching you. I'm the one that's got all eyes on you. What are you doing with that gift of salvation I have given you? What are you doing? What are you doing with it? Are you keeping it to yourself? Or are you giving it out? Are you slowly giving it away by the way you love somebody? Are you slowly giving it away by the way you talk to somebody? Are you slowly giving it away by the way you treat somebody? Are you keeping it to yourself? Are you still being that, that selfish person, that mean old person that don't want to love nobody, don't want to forgive nobody? Are you, you still being that person that always got something negative to say, something nasty to say? Are you still being that person that every time something go wrong, you got to rely on something to drink or you got to rely on something to get high with? Are you still still being that person that every time things don't go your way, you get on the telephone, you want to talk about this one and talk about that one. You want to play the blame game. It's everybody's fault but yours because you can't look at yourself. You can't see your own mistakes. You can't see that sometimes you get in your own way. What are you going to do with this gift called salvation? What are you going to do with it? Because remember the scripture says we're going to give an account and we're going to be paid back for everything that we've done. He's going to give us our, our rewards according to what we have done in this body. And what are we doing in this body? Is, is our body glorifying God or is our body still glorifying itself? Are we more concerned with the things of God or are we more concerned with the things of ourselves? Are we more concerned with pleasing the flesh or are we more concerned with pleasing our Father who's in heaven? God said, I've given so many of you gifts. I've given you gifts and you won't even unwrap them. You won't even open them. You won't even sit to the pastor and ask you to do something. You don't want to do it because you're too shy. The pastor asked you, can you do this? You don't want to do it because you just ain't there yet. But God said you're sitting on something that I gave you. I've given you a gift. And yet it's just like at Christmas time. You put gifts up on the tree. But come Christmas Day, the mother says, oh, no, I'm sorry. You can't open them. God said that's the same way you're treating the gifts that I've given you. And when you don't unwrap those gifts, they can't be effective because gifts are designed to be in the body of Christ. And not only are they designed to be in the body of Christ, but they are designed to work together for the edification of the body of Christ and the glorification of God. So when we sit on our gifts and we smother our gifts and we don't open our gifts, we are stunting the body of Christ. God said, I desire that you would use your gift. In fact, he said, when I come back, when I come back, when my son comes back, he's coming back with his rewards in his hands. It's just like the same way when, when, when you have those who are who are, are auditioning and, and, and they go and they, they make it, they finally make it and, and, and they go and they, they go to the Grammys and they go to the Emmys and they're looking forward to hopefully maybe I won this Emmy or maybe I won this Grammy or, you know, for being the best female role uh, uh, actress in this particular movie or, or the best male musician in this particular particular genre of music. Or, but they go in hopes of winning, winning some sort of award and and and, 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 and and being able to to feel good that they, their work has has gone not gone unnoticed and that's the same way when Jesus returns he said I come back with my rewards in my hands so in other words if you do good with this audition and then and and, 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 and the third but the third audition I looked up was the recall the recall the recall the the the, the director has seen something in the actor or actress that he likes so he recalls this person back in and that's what God does when God that he he can be pleased with us when God sees that, that there's something in us that, that mocks him, that mocks after him. When God sees that our behavior is in line with his will, he recalls us back to him. He, he calls us in for a recall. And when he calls us in for a recall, he rejuvenates us. He, he gives us that energy to keep on going. But he reevaluates us. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. My, my, my daughter Dawn is really doing well in this area and I'm so proud of her. And I, I just want to let her know how proud I am. So he reevaluates. He, she, she's no longer over here when it comes to that particular issue, but she's grown so much. And I've watched her go from here all the way up to here 
with this particular situation. So it needs reevaluating to where you started out when you came to the first audition. Now you're at the recall. He's reevaluating where you are now. And he says, wait a minute, I got to reward her. So therefore he says, well, hold up, wait a minute. Now it's time for elevation. So when God does our recall, God is reassessing everything that we've been doing with every gift that he's given us, all the ways that we change our life, all the ways that we mock after him, all the ways that we are in line with his word. He's looking. He's looking to see what we're doing with that. And when he sees we're doing something that pleases him the same way the 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 the, the colonel the colonel uh, 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 productor would call that that person back in because I that I see something in that young lady when she was auditioning for this role that I really liked and I want to have her come back. It's the same way God says I see something in Alize and I really like what I seen in Alize and so now I want to have her come back before me for a, a, a closed audition and I want to have her come back for a recall and I want to reevaluate her on her skills and, and, and on her job and that what she's doing for the kingdom and, and for the work of the Lord because the Bible says the harvest is plenteous but the labors are few so this is a job that we are have to do this is a duty that we are expected to do when we become his ambassadors when we say I take you on as Lord and Savior be master and Lord over my life be ruler over my heart this is what we're saying God whatever you need me to do I'll do it whatever wherever you need me to go I'll go whatever you need me to speak I'll speak so when God sees that he did something in Alize that's growing and continuing to grow and she's not staying stagnant in this place and she's not where she was first started out and God says, wait a minute, I need to call Alize back in for a recall. Uh -huh. I, 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 need to, I, need to, I need to reassess where she's at. Uh -huh. it's, it's time for me to take Alize a little bit higher, a, a little bit higher in me, give her a little bit more responsibility in me. And that's what God does with us with the recall. And then there's what we call the screen test. You went to the open audition. You, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the angels. And you said, here I am, God, just like I am. Remember, the open audition is for anybody. Anybody can come. Anybody can come. Anybody can get in that line and try out for the part. And you're saying, God, here I am. I no longer want to be the person that I am, but I want to be different. I want to be more like you. I'm trying out for the part, God. Please let me have it. And God says, okay. And then you go back for a closed audition. Sometimes we don't even know that we're in a closed audition because God is just watching our lives. He's watching how we do. He's watching what we do with the, the gift called salvation. Are we reading his word? Did, did we join up with a, a church body that worships him in spirit and in truth? that we, we can team up with and we can attend and we can learn and grow and get to know more about God and get to know more about the body of Christ and, and get to contribute ourselves in this body. See, that's the, that's the thing about a closed, closed audition in the spiritual is, is we don't know. We don't know how when, when God is watching us and where he's watching us at. That's why it's so important to do everything that you can with excellence. Everything that you can with excellence. I don't care if you fall short in the area. As long as you're giving your best shot, that's what God sees. Do everything that you can with excellence. And I, one thing I love about my sister doing, I don't care what type of job she has, she gives it her whole heart. I never understood that. She, she went from being a medical assistant. I've, I've worked for her on quite a few jobs and I've seen her character at work myself. And I've seen how kind she is and how compassionate she is. And, and I don't care what the situation, she never ever loses her cool. And if she, had, if I, she ever got angry on the job, I've never seen it when I worked with her. And, and but the one thing I love is I've watched her go from making almost 30,000 an hour as a medical assistant. She moved to Georgia to take care of my mom where she was making $2 and some change an hour. But yet she gave that job everything she had as if she was still making almost $30 an hour. She didn't skip a beat. She didn't have an attitude because of what she was making. She actually loved her job. She looked forward to going to work and she looked forward to being the best waitress she could be. 
And that's the way we ought to be with everything that God entrusts to us. We ought to be the best that we can be. And if we can't be the best right now, we ought to be striving to be the best that we can be. Be the best encourager you can be. Be the best friend that you can be. Be the best mother that you can be. Be the best husband that you can be. Be the best wife that you can be. Be the best boss that you can be. Be the best forgiver that you can be. Be the best lover that you can be. Be the best with all the mercy inside of you to be able to forgive that one and to overlook that one and to still love that one. Be the best with what God gives you because God doesn't give us his less. He always gives us his best. He's our new manager. We're under his new manager. He's opened up the door for these auditions. He said, I've given you an open audition. And this is for anybody who wants to try out, anybody who wants to switch jobs. You no longer want to be a, want to be a worker of iniquity, but you want to work for the harvest, the harvest of the Lord, because he said, it's plenty. It's, there's lots of work out there. I got work for everybody, anybody who wants to come to me. Come. Anybody. Everybody, he's putting out an SOS call, come. Now is the day of salvation, says the Lord. Now is the time. We are living in such chaotic, tragic times like we've never seen before. Every time I turn around, somebody else has been called on to glory. Wherever their soul is going to go, I couldn't tell you. But every time I turn around, somebody else's number is up. And it saddens my heart to see people younger than me dying left and right. To see the turmoil that's going on in our nation. Texas, a young black 18 year old just shot up some people in his school. 18 years old. Kids going around killing each other at schools, malls, going around killing people at churches, hijackers, taking people's cars off the highway, killing them, going to people's houses, killing them. So much tragedy, pestilences, which are diseases. Every time you turn around, there's a new disease coming out that we're battling. Every time you turn around, whoever expected this coronavirus to come out. And the last I knew, the number of people that died was in the millions. Storms going on all over the world that have never taken place in certain places that are now happening in these places. Earthquakes in diverse places. Famines. You got wildfires burning out of control in California, which are shutting down farmlands which is gonna to lead to famines. You got some people already starving around this world. Some people right here in Connecticut starving. Some people right in Georgia starving, living up under bridges. Relying on soup kitchens to feed them. Relying on people to go out in the streets that have a heart to say, I wanna go feed the homeless to feed them. Some people out there, and yes, there may be some people that are able-bodied and can't work, but there's some, some people out there who have disabilities and they can't work. They suffer from mental health problems. They suffer from being drug addicted. So now they're dual diagnosed. And I'm not making an excuse for it, but some people don't even have the capability of getting and keeping a job. But God said, when you came to that open audition, and you received my son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. And, and, and then I started watching you on a closer basis because now I, I got my eye on you and you want to mind and I'm your new manager. So I'm, I'm going to watch the way you perform because that's what the manager does, right? When a manager is ready to, to give a, a, a raise or an evaluation, he's watching your performance the whole time you're on the job. He's watching your performance. And that's what God does. He's watching our performance because, right, the scripture says that, that, that we're, going to, we're going to be paid. We're going, we're going to receive our pay according to what we have done in the body. What are you doing in your body that's glorifying God? What, what is it that you do to, to, to bring his name glory? Or are you still bringing self glory? Are we still living in, in, in this flesh, only pleasing this flesh? 
I ain't worried about, girl, I got to go. I got to get my nails done today. And after I get my nails done, I got to meet my boo. And then we go in the gym over here. And girl, then after that, we got such a, oh, no, 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 no. Well, I didn't hear God in that one time. Oh, so you mean you can't come to service because you got to get your nails done. You got to, you and your boo got a date. And then y'all got to go here and y'all got to go there. Where was that glorifying God? Where did God come about in all this? But yet, if God allowed the enemy to strike your boo down or strike you down with something where you can't go nowhere, then you want to get mad at God and you want to blame God. But yet you're doing nothing, nothing in your body to glorify him because there's no use in having a gift that you're not going to open. What use is the, is the gift if you're not going to open it? If my sister right now gave me $5,000 and all I did was keep it to myself, and she said, I want you to go. I want you to pay off your car. I want you to do this. I want you. And, and all I did was keep it to myself. What good is it doing me? My bills are just going to pile up, continue to pile up, because I just decided to hold on to the $5,000. And that's the same thing God is saying. Unwrap the gift. Open those gifts up. You, ha you have auditioned. You, you made the audition. And, and now I'm watching you closely to see what you do with those gifts. I'm watching you to see what you do with your skills. Remember that the definition, the definition of, of, of an audition was 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 it had something to do with skills, it consisting of a practical demonstration of the candidate's suitability and skill. So now, as God is watching, what are you doing with your skills? What are you doing with the grace and mercy that I've shown you? What are you doing with the love that I, that that I that I have for you? What are you doing with the forgiveness that, that my son died on the cross for you for? What are you doing with it all? You're still holding on to grudges. You're, you're still holding people accountable for what they did over 20 years ago. You, you're still mad at your mama because your mama said this five years ago and, and you ain't forgot about it yet. You're still mad at your father because your father decided he wanted to walk away when you was 10 years old and he ain't look back. You're still mad at your child because your child stole that money from you when they was on drugs and, 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 and you can't forget about it, let it go. You're still mad at that best friend that slept with your man. But yet he was somebody else's man when you was with him anyway. What are you doing to glorify God? What do you do when you get up in the morning? What's your routine? Do you just get up, roll out of bed? Wash your face, brush your teeth, take your shower, and go on about your day doing everything that you need to get done in a day? Do you take to stop and take time to give God the glory? Do you look for people that you can bless? Do you look for people that you can impart wisdom into you? Do you look for somebody and say, yeah, come here, baby girl, let me tell you about a Savior that I know called Jesus Christ, and let me tell you what he did for me. Do you call the pastor on Thursday night and say, I know church is coming up on Sunday. Is there anything that you need me to do? Because remember, we are designed as one body in Christ to sharpen each other, to work together. Every person on this line was given a gift and the gifts work together to edify the body. And when the body of Christ is edified, God is then glorified. So now that you've had this closed audition and now that God sees that, yes, I can trust Karina. I can trust her with this. And so now I'm going to move her to this level because she's passed the, she, she, she's passed the test on this audition. Now I'm going to, I'm going to move her up to, I'm going to give her a recall and, and, and elevate her in this level. And then I'm going to give her a screen test. Where, but now I'm going to put your life on open display. I'm going to put you out there for the world to see. Is your light going to shine on the screen test? Are you going to be like a city that's set upon the hill? Are you going to be that one that make a difference in somebody's life? Are you going to be the one that when you show up, darkness has to leave? Darkness runs away because the light showed up. Are you going to be the one? 
What's your screen test going to look like before God? What's your screen test going to look like in the earth? What's your screen test going to look like before the world? Because God says we should be in the world, but not of the world. Therefore, we should walk circumspectly. We should walk very carefully. We should walk in a way where somebody can just point and say there's something about that person that's different. I don't know what it is, but I need to get to know that person because there's something in it that I need. What is your screen test going to look like? God said, I am now your manager. And there's some doors that I want to open for you to walk into. But there's some things that I need you to do before I can open those doors. See, because God is not the type of God that's just going to send us into somewhere we're not ready to go. He, he wants to know that we're doing our part. He wants to know that we're, we're sharpening our skills. He wants to know that, that, that we're taking this thing for real. I'm studying where I, when I need to be studying. I'm praying when I need to be praying. I'm listening for God to talk to me when I need to be listening. I'm loving when I need to be loving. I'm forgiving when I need to be forgiven. I don't care what somebody has done to you. What I tell myself is, is it worth me getting upset over and never talking that person to that person again? Or is it worth that person seeing that God is real and the God in me is real and forgiving that person and continue to be there and, and love on that person? Not everybody you're going to love is going to be up close and personal. So love ain't even that hard. Because some people you only see once in a while. They may have hurt you in an the area. They may have done something to you, but you may never, you may see them once in a blue moon. How hard is it going to be for me to love and display love towards that person? It's not hard. Every time I think about the wretchedness in me, I'm like, Paul, oh, wretched man that I am. I ain't got time to be looking outside of me for what you're doing. I can pray, but I need to look at me. How many times have I needed God to forgive me? How many times do I need to God to forgive me that I didn't even know about? Because we pray the prayer, sins of omission and commission. Things I didn't know about, things I knew about. So how many times has God extended grace when I needed it? But yet I want to hold on to my old ways. I want to stay in the old man. I want to say Jesus is my savior, but yet I want to let Robin be in control. It doesn't work that way. Because, you know, when, when, when a new manager takes over and the new manager comes to the job and says, okay, now I need you to do things this way, this way, and this way. We're not doing the old no more. Those policies and procedures have been thrown away. We have incorporated these new policy procedures and this is the way things are going to be done. I guarantee you, if you continue doing things the old way and you don't adhere to the way new management says that the policy and procedures should run, I guarantee you, you'll be without a job. You will get fired. You will be relieved of your duties. But God in his infinite grace and mercy has given us chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance at the chance to get it right. I can't sit here and, and say how many chances I've had. If I had to keep going chance after chance, we'd be here for the next few months. Because that's how many chances he's given me to get it right. But then again, I don't want to take advantage of the chances that he's given me. At some point, I need to begin to grow. At some point, I need to begin to mature. At some point, I need to become less selfish. When I think of my Savior, and I think of how he took on my sins, and he got on a cross, he was beaten, bruised, tattered, mocked. They did the most to him. As the young folks would say, you do the most. They did the most to him. And he did that for me. He didn't commit one sin, never, ever, ever. Did he commit one sin? Even
even though he lived in a fleshly body, just like you and I, he did not give into sin not one time, but yet he took on my sins. He took on all the dirt that I would ever be get myself into. Everything that I would ever do contrary to my Lord and Savior, contrary to kingdom work. He died on that cross. He stayed right there in that spot for me. But he didn't just do it for me. He did it for each and every one of you. And how dare we come into the knowledge of him, accept him as our Lord and Savior, and then sit down on what he called us to do? How dare we? How dare we take him on as a new manager and don't do nothing that he instructs us to do? How dare we come to the open audition, receive salvation, get in line, receive salvation, and then don't do nothing else with it or sit on it? How dare we? When there's so many people out there dying all around us, dying in their sin, dying, because we're too afraid to open our mouths. We're too stuck on ourselves to become more like Christ and less like the world. Because we, 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 we are, are creatures of, 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 of habit, creatures of flesh. So our, our biggest desire be often becomes to please our flesh before we want to please God. We, we want to push God to the back burner and, and the principles of, of God to the back burner and, and kingdom work back to the back burner. Because I, me, man, it's all about me. I come first. Once I take care of me, I, my business, I take care of God's business. No, we got that all wrong. Take care of God's business and God will take care of your business. Audition. God says, I have an open audition. I have a closed audition where I want to elevate you. While I'm watching you, I have a recall while I want to elevate you and I have a screen test while I want to display you and I want the world to see my handiwork. Not that we're going out here to be arrogant or conceited or cocky. That's never God's plan. He said, those who humble themselves, I will exalt. But to go out here with humility to be willing to get your hands grimy and dirty, put your hands to the plow, reach in and grab another soul out, no matter what it costs. God said, that's the one I put on display. I see the way you love people, Sister Dawn. I see your heart is pure. I see you don't ask for nothing in return. And I got you on display. And I know sometimes it frustrates you because everybody doesn't see the love that you have to offer. Some people take advantage of the love that you have to offer. But God said, I got you on display, Dawn. I got you on display. It doesn't matter what they receive. It doesn't matter what they understand. It doesn't matter what they see. I have you on display. And I'm proud how you have made it to the screen test. And I'm proud to have you here on display because I know I can trust you with that love that's in your heart. And that's what God does for each and every one of us. He wants to put us on display. He sees the gifting that's in you. He wants you to begin to unwrap it. Unwrap that gift. Put it on. Put Those are your audition clothes. Put on that gift. Put on that gift of love. Put on that gift of forgiveness. Put on that gift of holy boldness. Don't let the enemy tell you that you are inferior and that you don't have nothing to say and that your voice don't matter and that you don't need to open your mouth because everybody going to laugh at you. Everybody going to mock you. You just ain't ready yet. Stop letting the enemy tell you them lies. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to intimidate you because he's afraid of what's inside of you. He know you're going to hurt his kingdom. So as long as he can get you to believe them lies, I'm too shy to do this. I can't do that. I can't. You know what behooves me? I can see a young child go into a school, get on a stage, 
perform one or two songs in front of a whole audience of people. You ask him to come into a church and sing in front of 10 people and they shy. That's nothing but the enemy. That is nobody but the enemy and his tactics. He wants you to, he okay with you getting on that, that stage, singing worldly songs to over an audience of over 100 people. But when you go to church to sing a song of praise to 10 people, he wants you to shut your mouth. I'm shy. I can't do this. I, I, I'm not ready for that yet. God said, when I gave you that audition and you tried out for the part and you took my son on as Lord and Savior, that's the moment you became ready. That's the moment that we have to give our total will. That, that's the moment where we says, God is no longer me, but it's you. I give my will over to you. I give myself away. I give myself away for you to use me. Use me, Lord, until you use me up. Order my steps in your word. This is what we're saying to God. It's no longer about me, God, but it's about you. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Become Lord and master. And when somebody is Lord and master and ruler over you, you adhere to what they tell you to do. You adhere to their ways. And that's what it's like in the body of Christ. God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Fear comes from the enemy. God said, that spirit don't come from me. That ain't none of mine. I didn't give you that. But God said, I have given you the spirit of boldness. Don't get me wrong. Not arrogant and not cocky because there's a difference. But boldness to come before me and to go before men and to speak my word. You don't have to be a preacher to minister to a soul. Sometimes the ministry can be just be a kind word. Sometimes the ministry can just be a smile. Sometimes the ministry can just be a hug. Have you ever given a stranger a hug that needed one? Sometimes that's the ministry. A city set upon a hill. If you see a city upon a hill, all you see is lights. At nighttime, all you see is lights. Because it's lit up. And that's how we should be in the earth. A city set, always letting our light shine. Because guess what? We landed the part. We came to the audition and we landed the part. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are now one of his. We can go out to the world. We can display his kindness. We can display his goodness. We can display his love. We can display his mercy. We can display his forgiveness, his compassion. We made it. We are on big screen now. We made it. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We made it. We passed the test. We made it. And God said, when it's all said and done, after I have you on display for the world to see, because once I recalled you, I, I once, once I had that closed audition with you, you were doing so well, I gave you a recall and I elevated you to a higher position. And once I seen how well you were doing with that elevation, you didn't become cocky, arrogant, conceited, you didn't think it was all about you, but you continue to give, you continue to love, you continue to have compassion, you continue to help, you continue to sow where you could. God said, well, I, 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 I did put you on the big screen. And boy, when you got on that big screen, I was so proud of you. I said, look at my daughter, Kayla. Look at her doing the role, yes. And boy, God 
said, I have a ceremony for you to come to where I got your rewards in my hand. You shall be rewarded, Dawn, for the worst that you have done. I have them in my hand when I come back. No, it ain't a Grammy. No, it ain't. And, but I got something so much better for you. And that's what God is saying. So when we teamed up with our new manager and we signed on under new management, he started opening doors and giving us auditions. And then what we do with the part and how we play the part is left up to us. Because the scripture says, therefore, whether we are at home on earth away from him. So that means what we do here matters. Or whether we are with him. We are constantly ambitious and strive earnestly to be pleasing to him. Our number one goal should always be to be pleasing to God. Let us begin to wake up. In the morning with the question on our mind, God, what can I do for you today? That should be our number one goal. For we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive his pay. However you are, however you die, is how, you, how you're going to be presented before the judgment seat of Christ. Don't die in your selfishness. Don't die doing you. Don't die with the mentality, me, myself, and I. Don't die with the saying, what have you done for me lately? But ask the question, God, what can I do for you? He said, so that each one may receive his pay according to what he or she has done in the body. It matters what we do here on earth. It matters how we treat people. It matters where we trod. It matters where our eyes look. It matters what our ears listen to. It matters what our mouth is saying. It matters what our hands are touching. It matters. Because we will receive our pay for those things that we do, whether they be good or evil, the scripture says. Whose side are you really on? Who is really your manager? Because God said, if you be in me, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. So who is your manager? Did you just say, Lord, come into my life and you stayed under the same Law of sin and death and Satan doing your own thing, working things your own way, looking out only for yourself, doing those things that benefit only you? Or did you say, Lord, come into my life, become Lord and master because I want to please you. I want to do those things that are pleasing to you. I want to walk where you tell me to walk. I want to speak what you tell me to say. I want to love on everybody that you tell me to love. Because we're going to give an account, whether good or evil. Considering what is his purpose and motive. What are your purposes and your motives? What is your motive while you're in this flesh? Because we can train this flesh. To do whatever it is we want. We can will it to do whatever we want it to do. Ask me, I know. There's some things that I used to do that I don't do no more. There's some places I used to go that I don't go no more. There's ways that I used to speak that I don't speak no more. So I am able to will this flesh to do what I want it to do. We're going to give an account. Considering what his purpose and motives have been. God knows what's in your heart. He knows the motive behind everything that you do. He knows if it's selfish or if it's selfless. Remember, you're always in a closed audition where his eyes are always on you. He said, I'm omnipresent. I'm everywhere at the same time. 
I watch Dawn all day long, just like I watch Kayla all day long, just like I watch Karina all day long, just like I watch uh, Alizé all day long, Kyra all day long, Mercy all day long, Robin all day long, Prince all day long, Brianna all day long. I see y'all all day long. Nothing gets by me. Nothing you do, nothing you think. It never, none of it gets by me. You're always in a closed audition with me. You're always in an audience of one. I always have my eyes on you. You'll give an account. You'll have to give an account for your motives. What have you achieved? What have you achieved for Christ? What have you done for Jesus lately? And ain't that something Jesus Jackson saying? What have you done for me lately? What have you done for Jesus lately? What have you achieved when it comes to the body of Christ? He said the harvest is plenteous. There's so much work out there to be done. So much. But I don't have that many people who are willing to do it, who are really willing to do it. I have a lot of people who say they're saved, but then they won't do nothing else but go beyond saying I'm saved. God said, no. Mm -mm. See, because I'm, I'm trying to recall you because I want to elevate you. So I need you to be doing some things while I'm, while I'm, I got you in a closed audition and I'm watching your life. I need you to be doing some things with those gifts and talents that I gave you. And because I want to recall you and I want to elevate you because I want to put you on the big screen to be, to be on display for people to see what my love looks like, what my kindness looks like, what my goodness looks like, what my grace looks like, what my mercy looks like, because we have the capability of doing those things. We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. He said, greater works shall you, shall you do than what he has done. Because when he went away, he said, I'm sending you. You're not going to be alone. I'm sending you one that's going to be with you, which is the comforter, the Holy Ghost, who will lead and guide and direct you in everything that you need to do. But if you're not adhering to the voice of the Holy Ghost, what are you doing? What are you, who are you adhering to? What voice are you listening to? What audition are you at? What movie are you trying to star in? Is the movie entitled Me, Myself, and I? Or is it the movie that says, I belong to God? You decide. You decide. Because God said, when my son comes back, he's coming back with his rewards in his hand. What are you giving your attention to? What are the things that you are accomplishing? Are your accomplish accomplishments only self-motivated? Or are we accomplishing things that can be shared with others? Given out, gifts that can be given out. God has need of each and every one of you. He said, I've placed you in a new management. I've opened the door for you to audition. I've given you a closed audition. I'm watching you carefully. I want to call you all back for recall because I want to elevate you. I want to take you to places and heights that you've never been. And then I want to put you on display for the world to see, that's my son, that's my daughter. God said, I wanna do those things for you. Cause I need the world to see that I'm real. I need them to see what I look like. I need them to see what I act like. And God is love, grace, mercy, selflessness, compassionate, forgiving, kind. That's the same way we ought to be in the earth because we are his ambassadors. We have landed the part and now we have to play the role, show off our skills, show off our capabilities because now you are on display. Most gracious and everlasting Father God, I thank you for this word that has come forth. I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that you are our new manager. We are no longer 
under the management of sin and death. But God, we are under your management, which is love and grace and mercy. God, I thank you that you have begun to open doors, oh God, that we shall walk through, oh God. And, and I thank you, oh God, that, that your eyes are always looking upon us, oh God. And God, I thank you that where we fall short in this area, God, you extend your hand down to help us, oh God, and to remind us, oh God, that there's, there's a better way to, to go about that thing. There's a better way to do that thing. God, I thank you for all the ways that you rescue us and, and that you save us and that you reach us, God, in the name of Jesus. Let our ears be be open, oh God, unto what you are saying, oh God, so that we may hear, oh God, what says the Lord, oh God. Let our hearts be receptive, oh God, for what you are imparting, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we may be ambassadors for you and the earth. God, I thank you and I praise you for the audition. I thank you, oh God, that I was able to come and, and, and the audition didn't limit anybody. Anybody is able to come and say, I'm, here I am, Lord, just like I am. I, I, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, I want you to come into my heart, Jesus. I, I want that. And God, I thank you that you don't just stop with the audition, God, but, but you, 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 you watch us a little bit closer. You hover over us a little bit more, God. That, that lets me know when you hover over me, God, that hurt, harm, and danger have to be on the outside because it's between me and you, God. You, you're, you're the one in the middle. So God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you how you watch over us, how you love us, God. I thank you. I thank you that you, you've seen something in each and every one of us, God, that you, you eventually call us back for a recall and say, hold up, wait a minute, let me reassess because my daughter is doing such a good job in this area and her, her skills are really sharpened in this area. And now I got to call her back in for a recall because I see something in her that I like or I see something in my son that I like it. And now I need to elevate them to a higher and a new position in me. I need to give them a little bit more responsibility, me and me. Thank you, God, for the elevation. And God, I thank you that once you see the elevation take place and you, you see that you are well pleased with your son and with your daughter, God, you said, now I'm, I'm going to give you the screen test. And I'm going to put you on the big screen. And I'm going to put you as a display for the world to see. Because I'm so proud of my son and I'm so proud of my daughter. I'm so proud of the way they love. I'm proud of the way they forgive. I'm proud of the way they give. I'm proud of the way they extend grace, the way they extend mercy, the way they extend compassion. I'm proud of them. How they look outside themselves for people to help, for lives to sow into, for ministries to, to sow into. I'm proud of the way they're doing that thing. God, I thank you for all the additions, all the doors that you open. And God, I thank you that when it's all said and done, we have our own personal Grammy and Emmy Award service, God, because your word says that Jesus is coming back with, his, with our rewards in his hands, and he shall reward each man according to his work. So, God, I thank you that we have that open invitation when it's all said and done to receive our rewards for whatever it is that we've done in this body. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you. I glorify you now in Jesus name. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I truly believe that each and every one of us on the line are already saved. So I'm not going to extend an uh, invitation to salvation. I know that um, most of us are a greater love church members. I know that Sister Marcy belongs to another church. So I know that we are all connected to a church. And so I'm not going to extend the doors of the church at this time. I am going to ask if, there anyone, if there's anyone who desires prayer, if you'll unmute yourself and we can certainly pray for you right now. If you'd like um, private prayer, you can call me, text me, whatever it is you'd like to do. You could call our evangelist in training, um, Sister Dawn, text or whatever it is you like to do we will certainly be here for you um, to pray with you um, if there's anybody who's in a bad living state maybe you just want to rededicate your life back to christ well certainly you can unmute yourself or you can give myself or or our evangelist and training sister dawn either a call or a text and we will certainly help you in that process um, if 
there's nothing else that needs to be said and done at this time, we will dismiss. I truly thank and praise God for each and every one of you that are on the line that came out to support. I pray to see all of you that are Connecticut located on Friday um, as I will be going down to Hamden to preach. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your support. So, and again, I will cover uh, whatever expenses we have for dinner or whatever we decide to go eat afterwards. I will cover the tab. Um, so um, be mindful. Let's, let's not try to, um, you know, spend the passes out too much. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's that. That'll be. It. Um, and then again, like I said, we have our um, after I preach on Friday night. Then the next engagement will be the following Sunday. Um, our one day women's conference. Um, at four o'clock at um, 93 Main Street, Pastor Watson's Church, Grace and Mercy Ministries at uh, 93 Main Street at four o'clock. And that's gonna be on a Sunday, October 24th. And and, um, and I'll be in the process of planning another uh, men's uh, conference. And that is that one too will be awesome. um, in person as well. And I'll plan that for around the time that my sister will be here so she can attend. Um, and I just want you guys to know what these women and men's conferences that I am planning um, this time um, for this women's conference, men are welcome to come. So please invite your spouses, your brothers, your fathers, whoever it is to come out. Um, they are welcome to come. And the same thing when I do the men's conference, the women will be welcome to come as well. So um, I'm, I'm just thankful and, and grateful that we were able to meet tonight. I love you all. And I pray I love that we you all too. go in peace until we see each other again. Amen. Oh, amen. Hallelujah.